Good morning, friends, wherever you are. I would love to welcome you to Daily Devotions by Pastor Michael Nguaro. Stay tuned for an exciting episode filled with inspiration, motivation, and encouragement for the day. Join the pastor now as he shares the word. Good morning, friends. Welcome to our morning devotion. My name is Michael Rugube Nguaru. What a pleasure it is to have you around, friends. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for yourself. We want to thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for the holy angels. We want to thank you, Lord, for people. We want to thank you for people. And also want to thank you for the living word even the Bible itself and the messages that come from it. And Lord, as we go through this devotion, I pray for understanding um, and I pray for your grace. May you lead us into all truth. And I also pray that you may be with my friends as they listen. May you be the great physician. May you be the protector. May you be the provider. Meet their needs according to your riches in glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Friends, we are continuing with our theme, more about Jesus, more about Jesus. And under that particular theme, we are looking today at a topic that says, avoid leading yourself to disappointments. We live in a world that disappoints. We are surrounded by people who disappoint. I know sometimes um, even when we have tried our level best, we find ourselves disappointed of self. There are situations like that, but sometimes um, we intentionally lead ourselves and set ourselves for disappointment. And this is something that I wouldn't want to see happening in your life. And for you to appreciate exactly what it is that we are talking about, I would like us to go to Matthew chapter 4, verse is 5 through 7, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and here is what it says, friends. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. End of court, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I don't know if you can see how this topic finds itself in the passage of scripture that we have read, but if you are able to read in between the lines, you can actually see that the devil was setting Jesus for some serious, serious disappointment. If Jesus had just chosen to um, buy into what the devil was saying and he jumps off the roof and you find yourself um, dropping and, and, and flying down to the ground and hoping angels were simply going to grab you, the devil knew that there was nothing of the sort that was going to happen. He read this promise from the scriptures, but he was reading it to Jesus out of context. He was giving it a twist, but the twist was meant to, to deceive and what have you. So this is what the devil is trying to achieve in life. And his experiment... Um, has worked with quite a number of people and he has been very successful in, in, in this particular line of thinking where um, we caught God out of context and we endanger our lives or we make certain expectations that God has not met. And at the end of the day, you'll find nothing of the sort is, is, is done. It's written in the Bible, but it's not happening uh, to you and what if, if you're a believer please pay attention to this particular devotional because it is designed to to help you and to to help me 
we need to understand exactly how the devil functions. We need to understand also how God functions. You know, the whole idea of the devil is to lead us to a point where we are disappointed of God and we get to a point where we don't trust him anymore. If he can do that, if he can do that, then you will have achieved a great deal in your life and possibly in my life as well. This is why we need to be on our guard as much as we saw Jesus Christ actually resisting that kind of temptation and what have you of you are told to do certain things that God has not said he is going to do. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no point where God says, you can be careless with your life and then my angels are going to protect you. I, I don't know if you are getting what I am saying, friend. There is nowhere in scripture where God says, be careless and then we are going to protect that, that's being too presumptuous. That's assuming too much. That's assuming too much. And you know, th there are times when we take carelessness for faith, when we take presumptuous um, attitude for faith, when we take wishful thinking for faith. You know, faith, faith may cause us to risk our lives especially when it is direct from God, when it is God who is saying do this and whatever happens for as long as it is God who is saying we should do certain things and you should understand it also in the context in which God is saying it but when we are simply involved in wishful thinking and carelessness at and presumption, and then want to equate that to faith, we are destined to a great disappointment in our lives. God has no partnership with that kind of thinking. What, what am I talking about? Friends, what am I talking about? Because I want you to understand what I'm talking about. We want to understand why, the de why Jesus Christ said to the devil, you, you should not tempt you. You should not tempt the Lord your God. What exactly is Jesus warning us about? What, what lessons can we learn from here? You know, there are some people, you know, during the days of HIV, um, when HIV was on the peak and you find somebody um, will just go and sleep around with unprotected sex and, and then hoping that I will not contract any virus because I have prayed or the Lord is with me and God is love. That sounds silly. That sounds silly. No wonder a lot of people who are that kind of thinking are no more today because God does not partner himself with that kind of thinking. You know, there are times not only do we endanger our lives, but there are certain times when we are told to do certain things that are not in line with the way God has designed things. We all know that um, the Bible says it is more blessed um, to give than to, to receive. It's, it's there in the Bible, in the book of Acts. Um, we know that. But if a pastor tells me to give offering so that God will give me a mercy dispense and so that I'll find a husband or a wife next year so that I will be promoted and the more offering I give the the more chances of my me getting the mercy dispense are high and whatever I have no problem when I'm told give and the Lord will, be, will bless but when you are so specific as to say do you want to live in a mansion, give such offering of this amount? Do you want um, to, to be healed, give so much amount of offering, and then the Lord is going to provide the blessings that you will not be able to receive? You know, we'll be quoting scripture that 
was rightly put with a good intention, but we can use it to cheat people and to fool people. And people who fall prey to that, who fall prey to that, are people who are destined to disappoint themselves. You know, I've met um, in my pastoral work of many years, I've, I've met people that have come to me and says, Pastor, I no longer want to go to church. I no longer want to worship God. And, and I ask, why, why would you want to stop worshiping God? What's the problem? And then they tell me, look, um, I was told when I return offering of this amount, my disease will go away. I was told if I give an offering of this amount, I'll find someone to marry. If I give an offering of such amount, I'll have a mention and whatever. I've been chasing blessings and I've been parting with monies, but those things are nowhere to come. Disappointments. People are being disappointed. People are being disappointed. And sometimes the disappointment is costing people's everlasting life where they get to a point where they don't want God in their lives because God is not keeping his promises. But, it, but is that the promise that God gave you? Did God give you a promise that he wants to give you Mercedes Benz? He wants to give you a house? Is it the promise that God gave? God says, I will bless. But did he tell you exactly what a blessing is going to give you? If the blessing is specific and it's written, I understand. But these are the blessings that we mention to ourselves may just amount to carelessness in terms of faith. That then set the stage for your great disappointment. Please, let's not quote God out of context. Even if there's a statement like that in the Bible, don't allow the devil to twist it for you to your disappointment because you know what the devil is trying to achieve? He wants you to be disappointed of God so that at the end of the day, you will lack, you will lack trust in God. But when God looks at you, you will simply say, you have disappointed yourself. Don't believe everything that you hear from people. Don't believe everything that you hear from the devil. Put things to a test. You are a logical person. You are a rational person. Of course, you are dealing with spirituality. But there are certain things that you need to have a judgment and be able to then cross-check with God and say, Lord, if I am this careless, we, are you going to protect my life? You need to be very careful, friends. That's, that's not how God operates. Carelessness leads to great disappointment. God has prescribed how he does things and how he works. Carelessness is not one of those things. Presumption is not one of those things. Wishful thinking is not one of those things. And no wonder you may ask me a question to say, so Pastor Nguaro, how then do we expect God's blessings? For me, friends, if you want to follow my example, for me, if I want a car, I will tell God what car I need. I've got the right to request. You have the right to request. You can make a request and then leave it to God to decide. Next time you hear a pastor saying, um, give an offering so that you can get a Mercedes Benz next year, so that, you can, so that you can get a job. God does not operate like that. Simply give offerings to support God's mission and let God be request. You can make a request and then leave it to God to decide. You really want to decide what blessings to give you. Don't set yourself for disappointment. God does not operate like that. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray that you may be with my friend and may you help them, Lord, not to be cheated into disappointing themselves so that at the end of the day they get disappointed of you. May you open their minds to reality, to truth. May the Holy Spirit guide them in their decision making. Even though we have wants and needs, but we pray, Lord, that it is your revelation that will guide us along the way. Help us, Lord. Save us from those people who set us for disappointment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
We praise God for a message like this. May His grace and love forever be with us. If you are blessed by today's message, click the like button, share the good news, and don't forget to subscribe for more devotionals. Have a wonderful day.